Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. A lot of you have been following our vacation through South Dakota and Wyoming. A lot of people have asked, we had visited Crazy Horse, and we're going to do a video today. But I want to let you know that when I first visited in 1997, it didn't look like much was done. And to be honest, with just the face done now, 74 years later, it looks like it's going to take a long time for them to finish that monument up there. As you know, the World War II interrupted a lot of life in America. It also interrupted the sculptor Korchak Tchaikovsky to start his project to memorialize Crazy Horse pretty close to Mount Rushmore. In fact, Tchaikovsky actually helped with the project to carve Mount Rushmore. Now, when he was interviewed by Mike Wallace for 60 Minutes, he was pretty arrogant about the fact that he thought he was going to live to see the project. At least a lot of it accomplished before his lifetime had passed. I think I'll live long enough that when you drive up that road, you'll say, yes, sir. That is crazy horse. That is a, that's the story of the Indian people. Yes, I'll live that long. You won't be surprised to know that this artistic genius was a little bit on the arrogant side. How can I ask you to believe that I can carve that mountain if I don't believe in myself first? Of course I'm egotistical. I believe I can do it. I know I can do it. To be completely honest, the mountain itself offers little to do other than gaze at it from afar, unless you want to pay the extra 125 bucks per person for the privilege of standing on the ridge near Crazy Horse's face along his extended arm. There is also an extra charge to ride a bus closer to the mountain without getting off, but we were tired and settled for staying inside the air-conditioned visitor center which is replete with plenty of cool Native American displays. One of the most impressive was this watercolor portrait of Ben Black Elk, who was son of Black Elk, who was a second cousin of Crazy Horse and a survivor of the Battle of Little Bighorn and the Wounded Knee Massacre. Ben Black Elk's headdress. It's good to take a picture because it reflects off of it. The headdress? Yeah. There would likely be no Crazy Horse Project if it wasn't for Korczak Joukowsky, who was born September 6, 1908 in Boston to Polish parents. He was orphaned at the age of one when his parents died in a boating accident. His scrappy nature may be traced back to being raised in a series of foster homes and later by an Irish boxer. He never received any formal art training, but his talent as a sculptor began to surface at a young age. He began to carve wood and by the age of 20 had become an accomplished furniture maker. His first marble sculpture, made in 1932, honored Judge Frederick Pickering Cabot, who inspired him as a child growing up in the rough neighborhoods of Boston. Joel Kowski moved to Connecticut, where he sold sculptures throughout New England. In 1939, Joukowsky was hired as a sculptor's assistant by Guts of Borglum on his Mount Rushmore project. However, he was unhappy, having expected to be made the primary assistant, which was a position already occupied by Lincoln Borglum. And when Joukowsky argued about his orders, Guts and Borglum fired him by telegram. A fist fight between Lincoln and Joukowsky had to be broken up. His sculpture of Ignacy Paderewski won first prize at the 1939 New York World's Fair. The resulting fame, as well as his familiarity with the Black Hills, prompted several Lakota chiefs, including a Lakota elder named Henry Standing Bear, to write him about a monument honoring Crazy Horse. Chief Henry Standing Bear wrote to him saying, quote, My fellow chiefs and I would like the white man to know that the red man has great heroes too. Obviously, he was reflecting on Mount Rushmore. Henry Standing Bear recruited and commissioned Jolkowski to carve the Crazy Horse Memorial. In 1947, Jolkowski moved to the Black Hills to search for a suitable mountain for his sculpture. He thought the Wyoming Tetons would be the best choice, where the rock would be better for carving, but the Lakota wanted the memorial in the sacred Black Hills on a 600-foot high mountain. On June 3, 1948, the first blast was made and the memorial was dedicated to the Native American people. In 
In 1950, Joukowsky met Ruth Ross, 18 years his junior, who was a volunteer at the monument and who would become his second wife that year. He told her point blank that the mountain came first and she came second. Their children third. And she agreed? She said, it's all right with me, dear. Mm -hmm. Now the children know that. They know they come third. That, that's a common understanding in our house. You're a hard man. What's hard about that? It's my life's work. I didn't come out here to marry a woman to have a lot of children. I came out here to carve a mountain. Work continued slowly since he refused to accept government grants. Instead, he raised money for the project by charging 75 cents admission to the monument work area. Sarah and I paid $30 a carload. Joukowsky continued his work until he died of acute pancreatitis in 1982 at the age of 74 in Sturgis, South Dakota. He was buried in an impressive tomb that he had carved at the base of the mountain. His widow, Ruth Joukowsky, took over the project as director. When she died on May 21, 2014, all ten of their children and two of their grandchildren have continued the carving or are active in the Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation. The plan is to complete the memorial as a focal point of a large university campus and cultural complex celebrating the Native American. Check out the teepee. All kinds of sacred pipes here. Wedding jar on the right. Jar in the middle and a wedding face. 1992 on the left. So these are relatively new. This is a clay pot. Beautiful works of art. Outside here in this courtyard is a 134th scale model to show what the Crazy Horse Memorial is going to look like when it's completed. Now it started in 1947 and you can see that uh, they still have a lot of work to do. A lot of people have suggested maybe they will never get it done. Not sure if that's the case, but it certainly is going to take a lot of money and a lot of time. Crazy Horse was born around 1840 and was killed on September 5, 1877. He was the Lakota war leader of the Okalala Band in the 19th century. He took up arms against the federal government to fight against encroachment by white American settlers on Native American territory and to preserve the traditional way of life of the Lakota people. His participation in several famous battles of the Black Hills War on the Northern Great Plains, among them the Fetterman Fight in 1866, in which he acted as a decoy, and the Battle of the Little Bighorn in 1876, earned him great respect from both his enemies and his own people. No doubt he was responsible for the deaths of a number of U.S. soldiers and other white settlers. In September 1877, just four months after surrendering to troops under General George Crook, Crazy Horse was fatally wounded by a bayonet-wielding military guard while allegedly resisting imprisonment at Camp Robinson in what is now Nebraska. So a lot like Mount Rushmore was carved, they're using the same methods, the jackhammers, the honeycombing. It's a kind of equipment that were used. Of course, dynamite as well. There's a picture of him dynamiting away the rock. This is the kind of rock that's here. It's a little different than Mount Rushmore, a redder granite. On the side is Joukowsky's home, which visitors can stroll. And hanging in the living room are two large paintings of Court Shock and his wife, Ruth. We're either inside his cabin or a reproduction of it. It's filled with all of his artifacts and piano here, there's an organ here. Of course these are done after he passed away. October 2013. These are pieces that he carved 
This one in 1946. I think all these pieces were done by him. And here's a sculpture, a wooden sculpture that he did when he was 21 years old. Take The wood was taken from the water in East Boston Harbor. Dead for a friend. Head of a horse from a mahogany tree in 1940. It took him nine days to do this. It's crazy. The sculptor studio and workshop held the greatest fascination for me. This is where a number of Jokowski's sculptures are on display. Here's a bust of Ray Kroc, the McDonald's guy. They were friends. Bronze from plaster study, life size. He yeah, was quite an accomplished sculptor. I did not realize that. My goodness, look at all this stuff. Wow. And look at this the Concord Stagecoach, pulled by six horses, called by Mark Twain, a cradle on wheels. It's the most famous coach ever made in America. It was unique in that it had leather springs using 14 cowhides to make one pair. This coach, made in 1856 in Concord, New Hampshire, ran the Deadwood to Cheyenne route, could carry as many 21 passengers, nine inside and 12 on top. Wow. Quite a collection here of different things. Flags, Fife and Bugle, Bugle Corps. Naked people down there. That's Petaruski. There's some Borglum reliefs over here. It's quite an art form. There's R. E. Driscoll, Sr., founder, First National Bank of the Black Hills in Rabbit City. This bronze piece is a scaled-down model of an original carved in Tennessee marble. The one in the courtyard, however, is made of plaster, yet it weighs 16 tons. Wild Bill Hickok, done in bronze, life-size. Wild Bill. I'm not sure if that's Bruno or the Buffalo. Is that him? Is that a little? Oh, that's, no, Bruno the Buffalo is in the Museum of the American Bison. This is taller than me. Look at that eye he's giving us. Just found out that Bill Clinton came here. There he is. Anyway. Nobody knows what Crazy Horse looked like, but they've decided to use that image. Did you see the wood carving that was the... Here's the way it looked in April of this year. This is a drill bit and a piece of rock, and there's a jackhammer. Rock from Crazy Horse. You can take a piece of it. And we did. We got our piece of the rock. You got your rock? I got my rock. I got rocks here. Sometimes there aren't enough rocks. Those who are critical of how long the carving is taking should realize the magnitude of the project, which is expected to be the largest sculpture in the world. When completed, it would be 563 feet high by 641 feet long. Crazy Horse's face is 87 feet from chin to crown, about 27 feet taller than any president's face on Mount Rushmore. I'm fairly certain that Crazy Horse will not be done in my lifetime. Perhaps my grandchildren will be able to see it one day in its completed form. 
for now, I'll just have to be content seeing the white outline of the horse's head and just know that someday it'll be a grand sight once it's finished. <laughs>